I'm Kane, that's Copes, and there was absolute chaos across the NBA since we all last sit in at this desk with the NBA trade deadline. We're going to break it all down from Kyrie Irving to Kevin Durant and everything in between. Uh, we also got ESPN.com's Tim McMahon that's going to fill us in from the ground in Dallas. He's about to join us. But you said you were feeling a bit flat coming into the studio and sleep is on the agenda a little bit later. Wake up, Copes. What'd you say? Are you fired up? Can you I'm ready to roll, baby. Let's go. Let's get the show going. What are you talking about? Kyrie Irving is in Dallas, as we discussed, and he has had played four games so far. He was pretty productive in his first outing with 20-plus points. Let's check out some of the highlights. Friday, he asks to be traded. A couple of days later, he's now a member of the Dallas Mavericks. Irving knocks that down. First point as a Dallas Mavericks. Irving backdoor cut. Puts up a three. Got it! This is a, a well-coached team. He told me to just be myself and just come in and play basketball at a high level. Launches a three. Oh, it's good. Pretty perfect debut for Kyrie Irving in his first game as a Maverick. Feels good just to get acclimated. It's been a long 96 hours, to say the least. It's time now to bring in Tim McMahon from ESPN.com. Currently in Dallas, you also find him on the Hoop Collective podcast, a favourite of mine, and Howdy Partners, which, by the way, Howdy Partners, we like, Copes, because the, the strategy is to not talk about the Lakers, and that's what we try and do on this show as well. Tim, thanks for your time. <laughs> well, the Lakers haven't given us a whole lot to talk about, so I think we can, uh, <laughs> you know, we, we can accomplish that goal pretty easily. Yeah, we may get to them a little bit later in this chat. We'll see. But first of all, this has been a big week. You cover the Dallas Mavericks as well as the rest of the Western Conference. But the Kyrie Irving experience through one week, how would you sum it up? I mean, honestly, so far, so good. Uh, it has been mostly about basketball, less about bowl stuff. <laughs> um, no major controversy so far. And listen, if it's about basketball, that dude can hoop. I mean, he is one of the most brilliant offensive basketball players, certainly of this generation, really in NBA history. Um, you know, they they won a, his first couple games without Luka. Uh, they haven't been able to win since Luka's gotten back, but, you know, that's not because of Kyrie. It's because, honestly, they, they need a lot of help defensively. Uh, but these guys are going to score a ton of points. They'll kind of iron out the kinks as far as, who's taking the shots down the stretch of games, you know, maybe being a little bit too too unselfish in this last game. But, I mean, just in terms of offensive uh, tandems, it doesn't get a whole lot better than than Luke and Kyrie. And, and they're, you know, just in the infancy of that relationship. Now, Tim, be honest with me. Tell me what, you, what were you thinking about when you heard Kyrie was coming to Dallas with Luka? I was just hoping I'd end up, uh, I do not end up looking like Nick Fidel. Uh, but then I remind myself that, that look, Fidel was ugly before he got, uh, you know, he got to covering Kyrie. So, you know, look, I am, I've, I've got my seatbelt buckled. You know, I, I took my little, my, you know, crash helmet off for this, for this show. You guys told me to kind of try to look pretty for this. But I mean, hey. The basketball stuff speaks for itself. So does his track record. There's mm. going to be turbulence. There, there's going to be chaos. And, you know, look, it, he might not be in Dallas for long. And things could go very well, and he still might not be in Dallas for long. He might decide, you know what, I want to go team up with LeBron on that team that you guys don't want to talk about. <laughs> or, you know, whatever else the case may be, that's well within his rights. I, I will say one thing. I, I did think that it was a, a smart, professional move of him. We asked him about that stuff Tuesday in L.A. after his first practice. And he basically said, look, we're going to be patient. There's no rush. We'll, we'll deal with the business stuff this summer. He meets the, the Dallas media as a whole for the first time uh, on uh, Monday night. And he's asked about it again. He basically said, please don't ask me about the future beyond the season anymore. I don't want those distractions. And, and that's fine because – he hasn't made a decision. By the way, the Mavericks haven't offered him anything. Mm. Uh, it's a test drive on both sides. And so, you know, I, I, I do think he was well within his right space to say, I don't want to talk about potential free agency every single day. Let's focus on this season. Nice. So a couple of the players that they did trade out as well, Dorian Finney-Smith and Spencer Dinwiddie, 
potentially particularly Finney Smith has opened up uh, extended opportunities for Josh Green who has really broken mm -hmm. his way into this rotation mm -hmm. anyway but how much confidence do you think that the club has continued to have in Josh taking on a major role because he has gone from strength to strength no he, he's really had a, a great year you know he missed uh, a month or so with an elbow injury but other than that he's he's had a phenomenal season especially for a guy who obviously he's still young just 22 years old uh, and and last year made steps, but then lost confidence. You know, was a was such a non shooter during the playoffs that he basically had to, you know, had to sit down. Got played out of the rotation. Worked his butt off this summer. Has really shot the ball well. And a a, a scouting buddy of mine uh, refers to him as the wing who does everything well. And usually it was <laughs> in the context of why don't the Mavs play the wing who does everything well more often? Yes. Well, with with Dorian Finney-Smith in Brooklyn, they're going to play Josh Green more often. He is a starter uh, for now and, you know, for the foreseeable future. Um, he's he's putting himself in position to get a really nice contract extension. Uh, honestly, Monday night against the Timberwolves took was a, was a, a, a rough night for him, didn't play well, made a mental error down the stretch. But again, for for the season as a whole, and especially since that trade, um, you know, th this guy's established himself as a legitimate player. And, and honestly, he's the third best player on the Mavericks. Uh, not necessarily a good thing for the Mavericks, but certainly evidence of, of the uh, progress that he's made. And speaking of his contract, do you expect him to sign a, a major contract next year? I, I think he's going to get a nice extension. Now, look, it's up to him and his agent uh, as far as what he's willing to sign. Um, you know, I don't know. There, there might be a number where they say, hey, if the Mavericks don't reach this number, we'll play this out. He'd be a restricted free agent the following summer. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see how those negotiations go. But what I do know is this. There's a lot of people around the league who recognize that this guy is a is a young, you know, that you hear that three and D wing, kind of that that's a commodity everybody wants. He certainly fits that category. Athletic, you know, uh, can, can handle the ball a little bit, has become a shooter. Um, the Mavericks love him. They see him as part of the, the long-term future here. Those things tend to work themselves out. So we see. I'll also, also say this. I will volunteer to be his agent because I would like to get 4% of his next contract for sure. So we see you on our TV screens all the time. We read your stuff. We know you are the ultimate professional, but we had no better example of this than a few <laughs> days ago when you were reporting sideline. I've been there before. I had a bit of an incident with Boban once and he mm. just like tapped me on the head and asked me if I was okay, little fella. But uh, you were bundled over on the sideline and I. Uh, this is a perfect example of professionalism, if you ask me. He didn't even say excuse me. Well... No, you could see the concern on John Wall's face. <laughs> no, wait, his face is looking. You could, could you could see the concern in, in, on the back of John Wall's head clearly. Uh, that was the day before John Wall was traded in a salary dump to the Rockets. I think I don't know. Maybe he had a little frustration out on that. Uh, who, who's to say? Um, I went on the air thirty seconds later. I might have bumbled and stumbled, but as you guys can see that's not necessarily due to any kind of hit. Now. I, I did catch wind that uh, Luka Doncic found that to be quite humorous. Wow. <laughs> and uh, so I, I I caught up with Luka last night, and I just told him, I said, look, man, don't you get any ideas. Cause <laughs> I can I can stay standing if John Wall hits me, but if, if Luka's big ass hits me, I'm going to end up in like <laughs> yeah, the fourth or fifth row. So I, I, I really, really hope that he, he did not get any inspiration out of that. That's funny. Tim, let's talk a little bit about the West now. KD's joined the Phoenix Suns. What's your prediction now with the West being so strong now? Mm. I tell you what, man. Whew, the Suns have some firepower. <laughs> yes. and, and KD's not playing for them yet, but I just got done watching, uh, you know, Chris Paul look like vintage CB, CP3. Mm. You know, Devin Booker put 30-something on, uh, on the Sacramento Kings. You know, DeAndre Ayton is, you know, I, for whatever reason, there's always, like, some kind of they don't really love him there, but man, and, you know, he's a big skilled uh center. And then Kevin Durant is, you know, we can argue top what number player of all time, but I think it's gonna, you know, uh, I wouldn't run out of fingers in that conversation, right? right? It's somewhere in the top 10 or so. It's a lot of firepower. I still personally like the Nuggets. I know that uh the the Suns have been established as the West favorites. I I, I know. 
my Nuggets pick would be a minority opinion, but I do think there's something to be said for continuity. There's something to be said for quality depth. And look, Jokic, two-time MVP, that's having the best season of his career. Mm -hmm. Jamal Murray's back to being, you know, that legitimate big-time co-star. Aaron Gordon, I thought, actually had an all-star argument. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. is the third option. KCP, Bruce Brown, off-season pickups that really fit well. I like the Nuggets, who have established themselves as as the clear top seed. Um, but it, it it's wide open, and and the Suns obviously made a massive move that's about opening up a championship window, and they're going to have a chance. All right, last one for you, Tim. Before we let you go, now All Star Weekend. Uh, sometimes. Uh, for the fans, for the people that might be spectating, for people travelling into the cities, it can be a big weekend at the events and away from the events. Now, I've heard some rumblings that uh, Salt Lake City, perhaps not high on the list of some of our uh, friends that are heading over there. What, what can we expect from the, the media contingent in Salt Lake City this weekend? You can expect me not to give a damn because I'm going to be in Bermuda. <laughs> that, that, is, that is the way to go. That is that is even better. That sounds like a good deal, Cubs. That's fantastic. Salt Lake City is not as bad as you think, but I tell you what, I hope you guys really enjoy yourself. <laughs> Tim, you, you, you enjoy the break. You enjoy Bermuda, and we absolutely appreciate your time here. Uh, as I said, we love all your coverage over at ESPN.com. All right, hey, I love every Australian I've ever met except for Andrew Bogut and Joe Ingles. Oh, wow. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Yeah, I like Ingles. Uh, he likes Ingles. Tim McMahon, he is a quality human and a quality reporter with ESPN.com as well. Now, we did not get to the Los Angeles Lakers. Now, part of the intrigue with the Lakers right now, 13th in the Western Conference standings, is that their first-round pick goes to the New Orleans Pelicans and mm. Victor Wembenyama. Everyone is excited about him. Let's hear what LeBron James had to say about Vic when he was recently asked. He's been a unicorn over the last few years, but he's more like, like an alien. No one has ever seen anyone as tall as he is, but as fluid and as graceful he is out on the floor. But you can tell he loves the game. He's smiling a lot. For sure, uh, a generational talent. There's a couple of things I love about this interview. Everything's been a unicorn in the past few years, and uh, I agree with him because uh, I hate it when people call me unicorn. I'd much rather be called an alien than a unicorn. I think unicorn isn't really original, you know. He also talked about something important for me. Is like uh, he said, I smile a lot on the court. I mean, for me, it, it all comes down to we play sport. We're just really, really playing, you know, and having fun is uh, like one of the most important things for me. He said big words like generational talent. You know, he said I'm graceful. But uh, you might be talented and uh, have a big skill set and be graceful, but uh, without hard work, talent doesn't mean anything. So I like what he said, especially about the, the unicorn and the, and the smile. Kevin Garnett. Some of the great All-Star Weekend highlights, and I don't care what anyone else says, Copes. I'm going to be watching it all, of course, on ESPN. But let's talk specifically about the dunk contest. Are you a fan of the dunk contest? No, not now. Back in the day, though, remember when they had the superstars, Jordan versus Dominique, Spud Webb versus Do Dominique? Those were the real dunk contests, and that's when the real stars did it. Now these guys are too busy. They're on social media. They're on their phone. They don't have time to dunk. Who's in the dunk hunters now this year? I don't even know a name. Mac McClung. Have you heard of Mac McClung? Never heard of him in my life. What does he do? Is well, he, he wasn't in the NBA until a couple of days ago when he signed a two-way contract with the Philadelphia 76ers. And I think this is the problem. I've got a little bit of a take I want to run by you here, okay. Coach. I, I think when it comes to the slam dunk contest, I think, and a big social media user, I think social media 
is killing the dunk contest because first of all, players don't want to go in the dunk contest. They're making a lot of money. Teams don't want them in there and they also don't want to fail. I don't, never think players used to be scared about failing in a dunk contest. Mm. I think that it has hurt it. And the other thing is people go on Instagram, you got all these crazy dunkers on Instagram doing stuff that maybe, arguably, would be better than the NBA guys anyway. You must be raining outside because this is the first time I'm agreeing with you ever. <laughs> I agree 100%. You, you go on social media, you see these guys doing the backwards 360 dunks, and the guys in the NBA are afraid to compete with these guys because if they lose or they look bad, they think they're going to lose money. Copes, Copes, it's about time you got on board with me. Let's try it again. <laughs> what conference, the West or the East, which conference has the power after the trade deadline? I think it should be an easy answer, but where are you at? I'm going with the West. Yes. You had KD. You know, you, you, KD to, to Phoenix is a, is a monster, but you got Jokic in the West. You know, you got all these great players now that can really ball, and I think the championship's coming out of the West. The Lakers, we don't like talking about the Lakers. The Lakers have added star power. They're going to be great. So Russell Westbrook no longer with the Lakers. They've added D'Angelo Russell, Malik Beasley, Rui Hachimura, Jared Vanderbilt. So they added depth to this team. I'm not sure. And I'll, shooters. I'm and sure shooters. I'll say star power, but shooting, and they needed it. Absolutely. They're 13th in the West right now, though, and I think they're in big trouble. But this man right here, people want to talk about can Kevin Durant fit in with the Phoenix Suns? Of course, he can fit in with the Phoenix Suns. Remember what happened when he joined Steph Curry, Clay Thompson? <laughs> All they did was win two straight titles, and this man won two Finals MVPs. He can fit with. Any team. Absolutely. I and mean, you got Chris Paul who likes to dish the ball. You got Booker who can shoot. You got Aiden who's become a new man again who likes to rebound and score. They got talent everywhere, man. And I, I look, I wasn't a Phoenix Suns fan, but I'm, I might have to jump on the bandwagon. All right. Yes or no? Can the Memphis Grizzlies, currently second in the West, can they win the no. title? No. I've said this all year long. John Moran, look. John Moran is a great player. I still think he, he he talks he talks a big talk. He's a chihuahua compared to these guys, man. Are you kidding me? Come on. They are a very young team, but it's it's interesting because you talk about John Moran talking this entire Memphis Grizzlies roster. They're young. They like to talk a little bit of smack. They like to get involved in the banter. And John Morant was asked recently, going back a, about a month or so <laughs> ago now, by ESPN's Malika Andrews, if he had any concerns with any other team in the Western Conference. Who do you look at around the league as you're studying and say, we're going to have to run through them? Celtics. No one in the West. Nah, I'm fine in the West. Now, Copes. Yep. Copes, no problems in the West, Ja Morant says. I bet you he's changed his mind now. What do you think? I'm guaranteed after the trade, he would have gone, oh, they're trying to stack the West now. So now they're worried because the West is really stacked. Well, in typical Ja Morant fashion, he was asked recently, and he said, I stand by what I said, so we'll see when they're going up against the Phoenix Suns, when they're going up against the Clippers, who, by the way, what about the Los Angeles Cl Clippers? We've actually seen Kawhi Leonard play basketball of late. We've seen You Paul mean to tell George. me he's not resting? He's not, he's not taking a day off? They were my preseason pick. The Clippers have the wing depth, the talent. Kawhi Leonard has done it with two different teams. He's trying to do it with a third. Do you trust the Clippers? I trust them if they're playing because, you know, because they play defense. They, when, they, when, they, when they're on the floor, they're a very good team. The problem is going to be resting those guys. And if he continues to play them, you've got to give them a shot. All right, let's move out east with the Boston Celtics, who really have had a monopoly on the number one seed in the east for much of the season. Uh, they are really now up there with the Milwaukee Bucks. They're almost on level peggings. The season series is tied at one apiece. Do you like the Celtics or do you like the Bucks? All year long, Brown and Tatum have been solid all the way through. They're consistent, they score the rock, but they got some backup. Now, White, who's been playing fantastic basketball with them as well. So I like what they bring to the table. I also like Milwaukee because they got shooters around the big fella. And when he gets going, he's rebounding, he's running the ball, he's shooting the ball. Um, they're tough as well. I tell you, the other thing that the Boston Celtics have had, they've had health for the most part, but they've also had defense. They're an elite defense. Now, when you're a defensive team and the Celtics are physical, they like mucking it up a little mm -hmm. bit. They don't, like, don't mind mixing and matching the physicality. But the only problem is if you're hustling for the ball and you've got two of your star players in <laughs> Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown going for the same ball, they can collide and potentially a stray elbow can fracture the face of Jalen Brown. This is catastrophic oh, for the Celtics. That's no good at all. Look at him. That's a sharp elbow, too. And, and look, look at Tatum. Watch elbow right to the side of the face. Bang. He's out.
So that's a fractured, uh, there is some bones fractured in the face of Jalen Brown. I say catastrophic, maybe that's me being a little bit dramatic. You know I don't mind doing that, but it's a few weeks <laughs> on the sideline. And that could be the difference when you're battling for the number one seed. You would think, though, that beard would have protected him a little bit, man. That's cushion, <laughs> you, you know what I mean? But again, he's, he's out. But they have talent, they have guys that can, that can you know, jump in that spot and do the job. Now, you've been in those situations. You've been in a locker room where potentially there might be some friendly fire. And maybe some people would sit back and say, you know what, I think Jason Tatum might owe Jalen Brown dinner, something along those lines, for the injury. Jason Tatum was asked about this by a media representative recently, and he had an interesting response. I mean, that's the least I can do, right? Um, I feel like I need to bomb a car or something. Um, you know, it's the first time all season, me and him both crashed from the corner and... You know, I end up elbowing them in the face. So, um, you know, I obviously feel terrible, you know, the freak accident. But, um, you know, whether it's a mask or buying them a car, you know, I think uh, I got it. A car copes. Man, can you believe it? These guys have way too much money. <laughs> if I got hit in the face back in my day, Drew would probably buy me a Snickers. Or oh, I'll get you a candy bar, I'll get you a Gatorade or something to drink on a car. And he's serious about it, too. He is. Now, we've been talking all about uh, trades and teams switching places. What about Dame Lillard? He has not. 11 seasons with the Portland Trailblazers, seven-time All-Star, six-time All-NBA player in the era where everyone wants to talk about rings. Do you like the fact that Damian Lillard is going down the Dirk Nowitzki path, sticking with one franchise? He's the most loyal player in the league right now, and I applaud him. Here's the problem, though. He needs some help. There's no way he's going to win a championship with the team he has. Somebody in the NBA, send that guy another superstar because he needs some help. The way he's playing right now, don't ruin, don't, don't blow that opportunity. He needs somebody on his side. Still in his absolute prime, and I compare Damian Lillard to Dirk Nowitzki, but the one thing he's missing is that ring. But Damian Lillard, Damian Lillard recently reflected on his time with the Portland Trailblazers. Lillard. A chance to send the Thunder home. Lillard, long range three, and it's good at the buzzer! Damian Lillard! My game winner against OKC, game five. I haven't seen this so many times. One th every time I see this, one thing that never changes is I can't believe how deep I was sometimes. Like, I actually shot that. That actually was a bad shot. But <laughs> Seth Curry, when the play is happening, Seth Curry is telling a bench, like, this is game. Like, he was telling them the game was over. And then after I made the shot, you see him turn around and stare at him like, I told you so. So, and he told me that after the game. But then on the tape, when you look at it, you can actually see him, like, talking to him. And then you see him turn around and stare at him. So that's like a, a story you don't see. And also, CJ, you see him in the corner telling me to go because he don't know what I'm thinking standing that far from the basket as time is running out. So I love to watch the, the fans' reactions, just like how excited they were when we, when we won this game. Alan Iverson, one of my all-time favorites, Copes. You, you would have been a big AI fan. Uh, no, I think he was a fan of mine, probably back in the day. Yeah, yeah. I played with the Sixers too. Remember that? Well, I, I do remember that. But speaking of <laughs> speaking of fans of yours, we have got the NBA All Star Celebrity Game coming up, which of course you can catch on ESPN. And if you keep doing so well on this show, Copes, you might get an invite to the Celebrity Game next year. Oh, you're a funny man. The problem is I don't know who's playing. Though. Do you have any names for me? Oh, we've got some names. I mean, Dwayne Wade is playing, which is interesting. I've got the list in front of nice. me. Nice. Yeah, Calvin Johnson, NFL star. Football player. Albert Pujols. Man, you... He was not moving very well towards the back end of his baseball <laughs> career. What are you going to do, stand there and hit somebody or set screens, I guess? Yeah, there you go. Yeah, I'm not sure. We'll see how the celebrity game goes. But what about the main event, the NBA All-Star game? You've got Team Giannis versus Team LeBron. Mm. Uh, Team LeBron, they, they pretty much always win. They've got the old-school draft on the court before the game. You love that. I would love to see that. I'd love to be there to see what's happening. Now, i got a question for you, though. Yes. Is Kevin Durant... Who, who is Kevin Durant playing for now? Which... which, which... 
Well, he's injured. He's not playing at all. But there's been replacements. There's been... Because Zion Williamson, we spoke about that big hamstring. Unfortunately, he just cannot stay healthy, Copes. Man, that's a big hamstring to work on. No wonder he can't stay, he can't stay healthy. He's too big to work on. Question. Another yes. question. Yes. Kyrie yeah. Irving, who's he playing for? Uh, I, I mean, uh, he's starting. Uh, well, actually, is he playing? I don't know either, Copes. If you're going to ask me these questions, I'm, <laughs> you gotta come I'm, with it, I'm bro. thoroughly confused. People think that I'm supposed to be an expert. That that clearly is not the case here. What about the NBA semifinals? They're going to continue to roll. So we're going to have game two between the Sydney Kings and the Cairns Taipans. The Cairns Taipans beat the Kings twice during the season. Do you give them a chance of getting out of this series? You always have to give them a chance. I just think the Kings are might, maybe a little bit too strong. But here's the thing. The Kings haven't played... And Cairns are coming in, playing that first game, so you, you got to be careful. The NBL semifinal series, of course, and the Cairns Taipans won those games with defense, which is what they're going to rely on in this series to beat the Sydney Kings. I tell you who we haven't seen in a dunk contest, that man on your shirt, LeBron James. Get in the dunk contest. He's too old now. Bye-bye, LeBron. You're too old, bro. Okay, see you next week. Like us. Sit back and watch <laughs> it like us. <laughs>